This is the original Surface Laptop Studio, and I've been using it as my main laptop for work, video editing, and even gaming for the last year and a half. And today I'm gonna to share what it's actually like to use this laptop from the perspective of a daily user, not a tech reviewer, and tell you if it's still worth it in 2023. Overall, this laptop has held up well, and it's still one of my favorite Windows laptops, but there are problems with it that are quite annoying, and I'm no longer using it as my main laptop for work, so stick around to find out why. All right, so the Surface Laptop Studio was released in September 2021. And the original reason I chose this laptop was because I wanted a Windows laptop with specs that could handle things like video editing and gaming, but also be portable and understated enough for day-to-day -day use. Like, I didn't want to carry around a bulky gaming laptop, and I also wanted decent battery life, which is a pretty common problem with Windows laptops, and we'll talk about that soon. This is also not your typical Surface device, despite having that same logo. It's much more powerful than the more common Surface laptop, and it's also technically a two-in-one device, so it folds out like this into a tablet but I use it in laptop mode like 95% of the time so I see it as a laptop first with some additional tablet features. Okay starting off with the design and the build quality. It's probably one of the main reasons I chose this laptop. This laptop has held up really well for the amount of daily use I put it through. Physically I haven't dropped it or anything but I've brought this laptop on so many trips across the world and I use it pretty much everywhere. In coffee shops, on a plane, you name it. The laptop still looks like it's in perfect condition and I never used a case or anything just this Amazon laptop sleeve. The only noticeable damage is this small dent here on the bottom of the front plate where the surface pen attaches to. I think it has something to do with the magnets, but I tried searching it up and couldn't find an explanation. Overall, this laptop is just so well built. It feels really premium as it should for the price. And the only way I could describe it is it has that MacBook build quality, which is pretty rare in Windows laptops. The hinge also hasn't loosened over time despite having this convertible screen feature. And yeah, Windows just really nailed the build quality on this one. It's probably one of the most solid and rigid Windows laptops on the market to this day. The only complaints I have here is that the device is a little bit thicker than I'd like it to be. And it is quite heavy coming in at just over four pounds. But again, with the specs and performance on this device, we're not comparing it to thin and light ultrabooks. So we'll let that one slide. Another one of my favorite things about this laptop is the keyboard and the trackpad. The keyboard is great. The keys are well laid out and it's really easy to get used to. The keys are clicky and have good key travel, but they're also not too loud or mushy. And I just always enjoy the typing experience on this laptop. The trackpad is also really impressive and works great with Windows 11 gestures. It's actually a haptic feedback trackpad and one of the only Windows laptops with a MacBook level trackpad. So you're not actually pressing down, but it feels like you are. And you can also change how light or heavy the pressure is. Overall, it's really responsive and great to use. I just wish it was a little bit bigger, but it fits into the theme of this laptop having really great build quality. All of these things combined are just to say that the Surface laptop Laptop Studio is a really enjoyable device to use even two years later. This helps me stay in the flow when I'm getting work done and also just makes me want to use the laptop more. Like even with this big monitor set up in my room, sometimes I'd rather just pick up my laptop and go work at a nearby cafe instead. It just feels good and that's one of the main things that people like about Apple devices. Less about the specs and more about the feeling you get when you're using it. That said, let's talk about what it's actually like to use this laptop in terms of the display and the performance. Okay, so for the screen you have a 14.4 inch touch display with a 2400 by 1600 resolution and the signature 3x2 aspect ratio like on other Surface devices. The 3x2 screen just feels a lot roomier when working with documents or browsing websites, especially when multitasking on Windows 11. But by far my favorite part about the display is the 120 hertz refresh rate. If you're unfamiliar with this, it just means that everything from browsing the web to gaming will feel a lot smoother than it does on the 60 hertz displays found on most other laptops. Some people say it's subtle, but if you try using this screen and then go back to a regular 60 hertz screen, you'll definitely notice the difference. Overall, this screen size is a perfect balance between portability and functionality. You can also get up to 500 nits of brightness, so it's pretty bright and usable in outdoor conditions, and the colors are accurate and vivid enough for most use cases. And it wouldn't be fair to talk about the screen without talking about the different modes you can put this screen into thanks to Microsoft's clever hinge design. So I mentioned I use this device in laptop mode like 95% of the time, but I actually have found some times where I've been able to fit the other modes into my workflow. This is stage mode they call it and it's kind of useless, but I actually have used it for watching movies in tight spaces before like on a plane. And the studio mode or tablet mode is the one that I actually don't use as often as I thought I would, mainly because I already have an iPad Pro. If I didn't have an iPad though, this tablet mode with the Surface Slim Pen 2 would be pretty good for everything I need to do from a workflow perspective. I'll occasionally use it to jot down notes or sketch a PowerPoint slide before I make it, and I could probably make thumbnails on this the same way I would on my iPad. The pen itself is pretty good for this laptop. I like the physical eraser at the back and how it has two programmable shortcut buttons. And whenever you're done with it, it just snaps 
to the bottom to charge. But that makes the Surface Slim Pen 2 a pretty mandatory accessory, which I'm not a fan of because it costs another $130 on top of the already pricey laptop. And maybe the one downside I can notice is that sometimes it feels like the screen or the software isn't as optimized for pen use as an iPad is. So sometimes there's a tiny bit of glitching, but I'd say that overall it's good enough for most people who need a tablet for work purposes. All right, now spec wise, this is what you all had a problem with. And I hear you, but you're also not getting the full picture. You're not just paying for the specs inside of this device, but rather the quality, the accessibility, and of course the premium Surface brand. The TLDR here is after more than a year and a half of work, video editing, gaming, watching movies, the performance is good enough, but let me explain. So my laptop is the top of the line model that comes with an 11th gen Intel i7, Nvidia 3050 Ti, and 32 gigs of RAM. So not surprisingly, it handles everyday work tasks really well. I can have a lot of windows open, work in huge Excel and PowerPoint files, and take full advantage of multitasking. Even when it comes to heavier work like video editing or gaming, this laptop handles it pretty well and that NVIDIA GPU really comes in handy. Let me show you what that looks like. So I used DaVinci Resolve to edit all my videos on this laptop and it's a pretty good experience with no major complaints, which is to be expected with that 32 gigs of RAM. Timeline playback is always smooth. Even with full resolution using 4K footage, I don't really have any issues. When you add more effects and start color grading things though, it does feel like you're getting close to the laptop's limits. But overall, the performance should be more than enough for casual video editing. I guess I'm pretty bad at video editing, so maybe it's not. Exporting and rendering is also fast on this laptop, but I have noticed that it is slightly slower than the new MacBook Pros. In terms of gaming performance, I really put this laptop through the test over the last year and a half. When it's connected to my monitor setup, it's pretty much become my primary gaming PC, which is pretty impressive. I mainly play Valorant and I get over 150 frames when playing on medium settings, but it does drop a bit when I'm connected to this monitor setup. And if you're only running lighter games like Minecraft, then you'll definitely be good. And if I'm ever playing on the screen directly, the 120 hertz display feels really good and almost like a gaming laptop. And in terms of software, this laptop is one of the first devices to ship with Windows 11 pre-installed. It's not a big change, mostly just the UI, but it's something that Windows has desperately needed for a while now. On a Surface device like this though, the new software aesthetic definitely helps match the hardware aesthetic. Okay, so all of that sounds great, right? But here's the kicker. All of the performance of this laptop is caveated by the fact that it has to be plugged in at all times, or the performance and battery life drops significantly. Which brings me to my first major problem with this laptop, the battery life. It sucks. And I wasn't expecting this because if you watch any other video about this laptop on YouTube, everyone skips over the battery life or just briefly mentions it has all day usage, quoting the figures that Microsoft gives. And this is simply not true unless you're using the laptop at 10% brightness and literally doing nothing. On 75% brightness, I get around two to three hours of battery life on this laptop. I try and close everything that I'm not using and literally just open Microsoft Edge to do my work and it still barely stretches to four or five hours of battery life at around 50% brightness, which is usually not even bright enough to work properly at a cafe. One of the reasons for this fast drain is probably the Nvidia GPU. And I've heard that you can manually select to just use the integrated GPU to save some power, but that just feels so unnecessary for a laptop that costs over $3,000. You can also try and save some battery by switching the display from 120 Hertz down to 60 Hertz. But again, I'm not trying to handicap my laptop just for an extra hour or two of battery life. I've managed to work around this problem by bringing a charger with me everywhere I go, but then that just means this laptop isn't so different from a bulky gaming laptop with better specs and similar battery life. But unlike a gaming laptop, the Surface Laptop Studio doesn't even do one thing exceptionally well. It's sort of just an all-arounder and I've been using the laptop for almost two years now and I still can't figure out who it was designed for. My best guess is it was designed for creative professionals, but then there are a few other problems. Like the port selection is horrible. I know hubs and adapters exist, but come on Microsoft. This laptop is clearly being sold to creative professionals and even compared to thin and light laptops, this laptop only has two USB-C ports and they're both on one side. And that's it. You'd think they would at least include an SD card reader because every creative professional uses one, but nope. The only slight save here is that both of these USB-C ports are Thunderbolt 4 compatible, so they are good for data transfer. But for a laptop that's supposed to be designed for professionals, the port selection sucks. And my last main problem with this laptop might be a little bit surprising, but it's extremely annoying, and that's the fans. Don't get me wrong, the internal fans on this device are actually pretty good, and they come out of the sides of the bottom of the device here so they don't actually touch your hands when you're using the laptop. But this laptop heats up so much and for no reason at all. Like there hasn't been a single day of use in the last two years where the fans aren't turned on to the max for no reason. I could literally have a few tabs in Microsoft Edge open with Discord in the background and this thing will be spinning at max.
But yeah, it's probably something to do with the thermals on this device being pretty bad because it does heat up quite a bit when you put it to any sort of performance task. I also found that the laptop randomly turns on the fan when it's asleep in the middle of the night and the screen is already down. I actually had to get out of bed a few times to open the laptop screen and then shut down the laptop completely to prevent this from happening. But yeah, this type of stuff just shouldn't be happening on a $3,000 device. So yeah, as you can tell, I definitely have mixed thoughts on this laptop. It's still one of my favorite Windows devices, but I am pretty critical of it because I have high expectations for these premium line of Surface products coming from Microsoft. Is it worth it though in 2023? If you truly need this two-in-one convertible feature in your workflow, then maybe it is if you can find it for the right price. The Surface Laptop Studio does a really good job of combining the full premium Windows laptop experience with extra tablet functionality for creative work. And I don't think that there's another two-in-one device out there that does it better or more seamlessly than the Surface line. The specs are a bit outdated because this is almost two years old, but it still holds up well in almost all day-to-day -day tasks, so don't get too caught up in specs when you hear tech reviewers talking about them. That being said, when you're comparing this to devices like the MacBook Pros that can often perform better for cheaper, you really need to think through why you're getting this device and if you actually need it. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm no longer using this device as my main laptop for work as I switched to a MacBook myself. So subscribe and stay tuned if you want to find out why and what my experience was like switching to Mac as a longtime Windows user. As always, thank you so much for watching until the end and let me know if you have any thoughts or questions in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time.